cliff edge. Oh, did you stay away from the cliff edge? Mm, no, once we were just staring right on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear that. A happy ending in the search for two missing children in Wolf County. Tonight we have team coverage of the rescue and we'll hear from one of the boys about his night in the Red River Gorge. Today was supposed to be sentencing for a man charged in a deadly crash. Now he could be changing his guilty plea. Police say a southern Kentucky man was high on meth when he crashed his truck. Tonight we're learning about his extensive criminal record. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. After being missing for 20 hours in the Red River Gorge, two boys are back with their families tonight. Five-year-old Michael Esposito and seven-year-old Adrian Ross were found just after one this afternoon. Rescue crews had been searching for them since they disappeared from the Coomer Ridge campground last night. WKYT's Garrett Weimer begins our top story team coverage from Wolf County. And Garrett, you actually had the chance to speak with one of the boys, right? I did, and after everything he and his family went through, Michael Esposito was in good spirits. We got to chat with him a little bit about what he called his adventure here in the Red River Gorge last night. His parents carried him up to us. He was greeted by family and friends, excited to see Michael once again. Michael told us he was never scared during his night out in the woods. He says he ate sticks and slept under a tree. Now, he did wind up, though, with a few scratches. What happened? <laughs> I, it got on my tree. A tree. A tree scratched you? Yeah. Did Now to top it all off, Michael says he's not ready to go home yet. He says they still have two days of their trip out here. Now for what it's worth, mom and dad say they are going to spend the night here uh, at the campground. After all, their gear is still very wet, but uh, in the morning they'll decide what they do next. They say they're just glad to have their son back with them and back with them safely. Live in Wolf County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. Now, more than 100 rescuers from multiple agencies across the Commonwealth were at the Red River Gorge to help with the search. And they say even though it was exhausting, they never gave up hope that they would find the two little boys. Hillary Thornton continues our team coverage now from Wolf County. And Hillary, you talked with the rescuers who actually found the boys. Hey there, Amber. A lot of smiles out here for those search crews as those young cousins are now safely back with their families. The mother of the five-year-old Michael said he's not even old enough to be in Boy Scouts, but he somehow found a way to manage out here alone in the woods among the treacherous Red River Gorge. It was a physically and emotionally draining day for more than 130 rescuers as they raced against the clock. Time alone in the Red River Gorge was the biggest concern crews had for the five-year-old and seven-year-old. As the hours passed, the urgency increasing to find the young cousins. Teams had a lot of ground to cover, so they used a grid search, searching about 1,000 acres. Several canine units aided in the search, and rescuers say it was a hit from one of those dogs that led them to the area where the boys were found. The Forest Service team says they started calling for the boys and got a response. They say the young boys were resting along some rocks and trees in what is called the Mountain Laurel. Uh, at that point, they knew they were lost. They had slept uh, somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where, but they uh, had laid up against a rock and a tree a couple of times. But they didn't seem like they were. They were a little cold. Um, one was in shorts. One was in pants. But uh, they they were fine. They were really really good. So I was I was really happy. So crews out here certainly going home with smiles after spending close to 24 hours out here in the gorge searching for that five-year-old and seven-year-old. Their families say they will be forever grateful for those crews' tireless search efforts out here. Live in Wolf County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. Certainly a great outcome, and rescue crews made it to those children just in time. Showers and thunderstorms were moving into the area when they were found, and some parts of the Commonwealth have been dealing with heavy rain, even a lot of wind. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey shows us what's on the first alert defender now. Chris.
Cold front finally right on top of southeastern Kentucky, pushing those thunderstorms and steadier rains on out of the bluegrass state. And we're going to introduce a lot of chilly air on a drying northwesterly wind flow that is out there across the Commonwealth of Kentucky as of right now. And that potent line of thunderstorms now kicking up its heels to the southeast of Kentucky as we go into the southeastern corner of the state. Well, we've still got another hour or two of some heavy downpours here from Pikeville through Hindman Hazard back into Manchester around London. And down toward Barberville with thunder and lightning heading into the uh, Bell County area. Light to moderate rains back into London and Somerset. Notice as we get farther to the north on Defender, it's mainly just a little sprinkle or some patchy areas of drizzle, and that continues into parts of northeastern Kentucky as well. So if you're out and about this evening, showers mainly into eastern and southeastern Kentucky. Anyone fair game, though, for a sprinkle or two. And high school football games will see temperatures dropping into the upper 50s by the time we hit the second part of the uh, game. You get into the uh, second half, and yeah, temperatures will begin to chill down. Those raindrops that are out there are getting ready to get on out of here, and they're going to give way to some very nice weather for the weekend. We're tracking the the good stuff when I can back in 10 minutes. Thanks, Chris. And as Chris mentioned, the storms did some damage. Crews in Richmond were out on 3rd Street and Woodland Avenue working to remove a tree from a power line. We also had reports of trees down on two cars on Aspen Avenue. Kentucky Utilities reports only a small number of outages in Madison County. We're tracking a developing story out of Boyle County. A busy road has now reopened after a deadly crash. The Boyle County coroner tells us an SUV and a pickup collided on Popplewell Road near US 127 about 2.30 this afternoon. We're told the SUV burst into flames. The coroner says one person was killed. Police have not released any other details about the crash. A man charged in a deadly hit and run says he wants to withdraw his guilty plea. And Hel Mejia made the request to a judge in a letter. Police say he crashed into a pickup truck on I-64 in Lexington last year, killing 68-year-old Wanda Beach. WKYT's Victor Puente was at today's hearing and has more on why Mejia has changed his mind. Angel Mejia's attorney told the judge today he didn't understand all of the evidence against him. That could lead to his guilty plea being withdrawn. That crash happened in June of last year. Police say Mejia was speeding on Interstate 64 when he hit a Chevy Blazer, killing 68-year-old Wanda Beach, who was from Pulaski County. Police say alcohol was a factor, and they had to chase Mejia after he ran from the scene and hit in a barn. Beach's boyfriend was also injured in that crash. Mejia spoke to the judge today through an interpreter, and she asked him about a letter he had written her saying he wanted to take back his guilty plea. His public defenders said he had made the agreement through an interpreter and hadn't understood the evidence against him. And while he had the assistance of an interpreter, she was not fully comprehending the materials in the discovery. Sounds like when you set this matter for a hearing, I guess. The hearing to see if Mejia will be able to withdraw that guilty plea is set for November 16th. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. In addition to murder, Mejia is also charged with wanton endangerment and leaving the scene of an accident. Three people charged in the death of a UK student were in court today. Efren Diaz, Justin Smith, and Roman Gonzalez Jr. are charged with the murder of Jonathan Kruger. Police say someone robbed and shot Kruger back in April on East Maxwell Street in Lexington. All three have pled not guilty in the case. Today, attorneys updated the judge on the evidence that is still being processed. The three men are scheduled to be back in court December 4th. Police say a Laurel County man was high on meth when he crashed his truck, injuring two people. 28-year-old Anthony Allen is charged with DUI, and it turns out this isn't his first offense. Tonight, we're learning more about Allen's criminal history, and Phil Pendleton also has the 911 call from the passengers involved in the crash. A violent crash with three adults inside this little Ford pickup truck. We went right over that mountain. Police say 28 year old Anthony Allen was behind the wheel. Two women were with him. We're on the way back up on our cars. My niece's arm is half ripped off. All of her ribs are broke. All three were hurt and then hospitalized. Police say Allen was extremely high. As we continued our investigation, we determined that the driver. 
had apparently been using meth all day. Police say he never should have been behind the wheel in the first place. He was also driving on DUI suspended license second offense. Police said their initial search showed two previous DUIs. But I did some digging. And I found so much here in the Laurel County Judicial Center dating back 10 years. There is no way that I could tell you everything about what Allen is either accused of doing or been convicted of doing in one single news story. He was even convicted in 2012 of his fourth offense of DUI and sentenced to four years. But he was paroled 11 months later. He violated parole a year after that, released a month later, violated again, and completed his sentence this past January. Thursday, police say he was back to his bad habits. He's apparently not learning. I think that he'll learn this time. Only time will tell. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Tonight, we've learned Allen's criminal history goes back 10 years. His juvenile records were sealed. The president of Eastern Kentucky University says he is impressed with how the university handled a campus threat this week. President Michael Benson sent out a letter to the EKU community thanking everyone for their cooperation. The university has been investigating all week after someone left a threatening message on the wall of a bathroom. The university canceled classes for the rest of the week. So far, no arrests have been made, but EKU has received more than 75 tips in the case. New tonight, Richmond police have arrested a man they say robbed a bank. It happened just after 1 this afternoon at the PNC Bank on East Main Street. Police say 31-year-old Jerry Beerbaum walked into the bank and pretended to be interested in a loan. But a short time later, they say he announced he was robbing the bank and implied he had a weapon. After getting some money, police say Beerbaum ran off. Richmond police say they soon spotted him nearby and arrested him after a foot chase. New tonight, we have received surveillance video showing a Breathitt County escapee on the run. The jailer says Justin Talby escaped today while prisoners were being unloaded at the courthouse. Police say Talby was wearing an orange jumpsuit and had no shoes on. He was also still handcuffed. The jailer says Talby is not considered to be dangerous. A former Georgia doctor admits he conspired with the owner of a pain clinic to illegally distribute painkillers in Kentucky. 58-year-old Michael Johnston pled guilty in federal court in London yesterday. A plea agreement calls for him to spend 10 years in prison. Johnston admitted he helped distribute oxycodone and Xanax to people in Kentucky, including Lexington, in 2011. Johnston is scheduled to be sentenced on January 12th. A man is recovering tonight after police say someone stabbed him during a fight. Police say they found a man on Ballard Drive in Richmond last night. Emergency crews rushed into the hospital to be treated for a stab wound. Police say he underwent surgery and is now in good condition at UK Hospital. We're told as many as 20 people were involved in the disorder, but police have not arrested anyone. Now.